My name is uh, Thibaut Barras. I'm the general manager of uh, Dreamwall. And uh, since two years, we are uh, partners of Zero Density, which is actually the best uh, virtual studio technology that you can find on the market. And Idemir is there to explain it uh, better than me, but I just can share with you uh, what we did this summer for uh, TF1. TF1 is uh, for uh, people who don't know. Uh, uh, TF1 is uh, the biggest uh, TV channel in terms of audience in Europe. And uh, it took place in France inside their um, um, location. And so they uh, asked Dreamwall to provide them with a virtual set extension with uh, augmented reality, with virtual reality sequences. And so what I just want to, to explain is how we have created and what we developed for that specific project. And uh, so I'm going to start with, uh, of course, uh, France has been uh, world champions. So uh, I will talk about before, uh, just to share you some video, you see how we add virtual set extension and give the illusion that all the set, real set, is inside a virtual stadium. This is real LED wall. These are virtual set extension. This is green box to uh, do um, some virtual sequence. This is supporter. So we put 30,000 supporters virtual supporters that we can control. We can control the colors of the suits. We can control animation. We can control everything. This is an example of tactical lineups that we did uh, for a presentation uh, during the, the game. This is, uh, of course, augmented reality. Not, uh, not so uh, difficult to achieve. And we provided also some goodies, like airship, like Patrouille de France, with uh, some planes coming uh, over uh, uh, the, stadi the, the set or different um, virtual sets during uh, the... We, provi we produce also uh, virtual sequences to explain to people. This is the bus. The bus scene is really spectacular uh, because uh, we were able to give the impression that the presenter arrives by bus on the set. And uh, also in the cloakroom, because the presenter always try to add value to his content. This content was to explain to people how the cloakroom is organized uh, all the time. Um, first, I was talking about virtual set extension. You have to see that here is the real studio, real studio location, you see? so. You have the video wall, you have here a space that uh, TF1 doesn't want to, s to show and to, to, to see, and the green screen, okay? So to provide this picture, this picture, and when the camera is moving, of course, the virtual set extension is moving as well, but also the content of the video wall, which because this is only one scene, the scene is divide it uh, into parts, into different render engines. So you have one render engine, you have a second one for the screen, and you have a third one for the green box, okay? So it's a combination of different render engines, thanks to Zero Density. One thing which is really important is that uh, you see the arches. The arches here are real, and so in order to get the 3D correct mask of uh, the arches without using green screen, because there is no green screen, we scanned. We scanned with a 3D. Uh, it's a 3D scan that we produced in order to get the exact shape of, uh, of the arches. OK, so we provide uh, this virtual set extension. And the stadium was provided also in two ambient lights, one for the games of the show that were taken at night or uh, during the day. So it was two different uh, ambient on environment. We provide also volumetric lights with some movement, this kind of thing, just to, 
figure uh, different things. So I explained already how we did the job, set extension, physical let wall, and the green box. Uh, I told you a little bit about supporters. So uh, what about a stadium without supporters? So it doesn't make sense. So for this, for this project, we put inside the stadium 30,000, 30,000 uh, supporters on which we get the control. We get the control of the colors of their suits, okay? So uh, you can see on a closer shot that they are different. Um, of course, we were using only five or six different models, but uh, by changing all the suits, it gives an impression of a crowd. And for each game, by example, when uh, uh, Belgium was playing against France, you've got corner of supporters with uh, the colors of a flag of the two countries. And so that's the reason why we are able to change easily. It's only a texture over the stadium. And so depending on the texture of the stadium, the supporter change is the color of his suit. That's all. We've been talking about virtual set extension, about uh, supporters. Now uh, let's talk about the virtual reality sequence. We did also the locker room. You see a little bit how it's uh, just uh, how we did. We present, you see this is a real uh, jersey and gives the impression that is, uh, of course, uh, inside the cloakroom or inside the bus when Denis Brognard wants to put his hand on the seat of a bus, he can put his hand on some small thing just to give more and more reality. Okay, so it was another one, another one which is a physio, and this is what I called inception effect. It's a little bit complicated to, to explain, not to understand but to explain. You see that picture, you see the stadium, you have already understood about whatever, all of these things, how it's did. But you see there, you see this environment, okay? Because on a wide shot, they want to come from the real set to the virtual scene, to say, hey, Julie, come, come with me. You, uh, you need some, uh, some massage or whatever. And so why we call it inception effect is because you have one virtual world environment that is inside another one or, or the uh, or, uh, opposite way, of course. This is, and so it's a combination of render engine. You have, so two render engines, these two render engines are coming in the, in the third one with the same tracking. So the, sa the tracking was divided and was split it for three different render engines. Okay? It's only wires and cables, so it's not really an issue. But uh, so, and this is the reason why we call it inception, of course. We did some uh, augmented reality and depending. So uh, we have not started uh, the World Cup for TF1 with everything that was described. Uh, from time to time, TF1 asks us to, to add different things. And so, um, at the beginning, it was not planned to do the tactical lineup like this. But as we receive a material from FIFA, we said, oh, maybe we can do something with this. So, during all the process, it has been, um, we, we have produced more and more advanced uh, features. So, everything was not described at the beginning of a project. Okay, but uh, various things, uh, Patrouille de France, uh, the different planes, the moon or uh, airship. Now in Telefoot, we have birds, birds in the stadium. It just gives some, you cannot notice it, but it's something which is brings a little bit more of reality. Okay, so it was for TF1. Uh, just before to close, I just want to get a focus on uh, 
what we did for RTBF, also for uh, World Cup, with teleportation. So uh, it was not the first experiment, but I think it's the first with vet quality. And so uh, Eden Hazar uh, was, of course, in Russia. And here it's, uh, of course, the studio in, uh, in Brussels. And he is integrated as what we call teleportation, of course, but it's not really te teleportation, you understood. So you can, maybe we can show some video. Uh, so the way it has been done, yeah. So you see the camera movement, of course, are coming from the studio. Here is, of course, from Russia on the green screen. For audio, we were using phone because the delay of the phone was uh, better than uh, by satellite, of course. And you have seen here with Witzel, the same. And we produced also some virtual set croak room to for journalists to, to explain different, different things during the World Cup. Okay, so I hope you understand a little bit more uh, about how we, uh, how we did this, this project. And uh, I'm available for every question. And uh, um, I want to, to thank, of course, Zero density, because without zero density, never, never, we would be able to, to do this project in that way. Thank you.